Okay, hello again. Try to talk with you about the internal resistance of a lithium or a bleed acid or whatever, any kind of battery. It's always, it's always nice to see the internal resistance of the elements when you have a uh, when you try to put a battery together, then it can be properly done, uh, you know, to have all these cells as close as possible with uh, almost the same internal uh, resistance. And because I couldn't afford a, a professional uh, measurement equipment, I have been trying to, to make my own one and I, I found very easy to do it. This, uh, this circuit here used uh, two five 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 uh, uh, circuits, integrated circuits, and one of them it's a mono stable uh, oscillator, and the one and the other one it's a timer. These two are applying for ten seconds a load to the cell or to the battery. This is the load here uh, with. Uh, around 67 Hertz this is not so important but it should be around 50 67 Hertz because I'm going to use one of these multimeters for measuring the results and uh, these are working properly for uh, 50 60 Hertz uh, alternative current this one the other one it's applying the load to the battery terminals for about uh, 10 seconds will have a, a tension, a voltage fall on this resistance here and I can measure that in uh, milli ohms and I can measure that in milli ohms and afterward uh, that will be divided by 10 and it gives me an idea of, uh, of the internal resistance so let's have another test now and uh, I want to see with the oscilloscope What's the frequency here? Theoretically, we should have 50 Hz. Why it's only 50 Hz? It can be more, of course. But why we have only 50 Hz? Because, uh, because these multimeters, they are not working properly if you have, if you have a, a higher frequency. They are calibrated somehow to, to measure 50 or 60 Hertz uh, alternative uh, tensions or AC current, alternative current. That's the ground. I'm going to try to measure here to the MOSFET gate. Here we go. Let's see. And here we are. So we have a square. So we have a square waveform of about, you see this? Once again, okay, so let's check the frequency, okay, so now we, we should read the frequency 5.2 volts uh, ms and the frequency down here it's 66, 67, 67 hertz, that's absolutely marvelous, for about and let's see 11.7 seconds that's absolutely nice this also can be used to to measure the internal resistance of a car battery but then it needs to to have another load here another resistance here and that should be around uh, maybe 0 0.5 0 0.6 uh, to have a proper discharge, you know, you know like like uh, 10 amps or even 20 amps and uh, it, of course it needs to be stronger but anyway, that's, uh, that's the idea of the, of the things and uh, I really hope it helped me to, to and we're gonna have some tests right now I'm going to check some lithium batteries. So, I got the cells here. Let's take them out. Hopefully no shorts. <laughs> it's, it's pretty dangerous to work with. 
this kind of batteries and be really really sure that you are not doing any shorts and uh, it's also nice about this because you can you can check also if the batteries are charged because it needs to be charged to to the right level uh, in our case that should be like 3.7 volts or something and now let's connect the the multimeter here and we'll have the schematic at the end of the video to see what I'm talking about ok multimeter what's nice about this once it's on then I can also check the voltage to the battery is very easy so this is plus this is minus and let's see if I'm going like this 4.17 oh that's a really good nice charge go back to AC on 2 volts or 1 volt depends on the instrument but I'm using 2 volts and um, this one it's uh, supplied by 12 volts but it's only for the electronics got nothing to do with, uh, with the batteries with the testing part of the things and now I'm applying uh, the power here and I may say this element here have 162 millivolts in alternating current if we divide by 10 that means like 16 once again that means like almost like 16 uh, milli ohms and let me check let me check the current too let's see what current do we have here okay this in this is a pretty good experiment let's go oh so I, I have like 1.88 amps that's perfect for this kind of cell it's almost at, uh, at the top of the current it should be 198 196 let's write this down cell number one 196 divided by 10 that like let's say 20 mil ohms 20 millions that's cell number one okay let's try this one now plus minus so now I'm using one ohm resistance here that's the load uh, let's say if, if you are if you are trying to check a, a big car battery that should be like uh, maybe 0.5 ohms because we need a much much uh, much better current like 10 amps or even 20 amps the load resistance can be adjusted very easy for different purposes so for this kind of cells measuring out at almost 2 amps it's uh, it's perfect okay I think I measured this before and I had 166 like 16 milli milli ohms let's see the, the voltage 4.10.11 that's nice okay let's push it so that should be like 20 milli ohms they are pretty close too 0.21 and this one 4 a uh, good charge 0 0.21 they are pretty the same so that should go well in a pack one by one let me check some others oh 
do I have some more? Okay, we have one here. I measured before and it says it's zero and it says like eight millivolts. Eight milliohms, I'm sorry. Charged 4.4 K. Here we go. One seventy-five. So it's like almost, let's say, seventeen milliohms. You see what I meant uh, about contact. So it goes down to. But I may say clearly, it's like seventeen. Well, like I said, I'm not. I'm not sure if the measurement is uh, exactly uh, like a professional something, you know, but at least, at least you may have the idea about, about the internal resistance and you can, you can sort the cells in a proper way, you know, for better or worse uh, internal resistance. And this is really important in the moment when you want to have a, a battery pack. Let's say this one. It's one zero seven. It was one zero seven. Now let's see what we got here. Is it charged? Yes, it is. Zero two one one. Okay. Oh, they are pretty close. But why? Because I remember that I already already checked this before and uh, they are pretty close like in time resistance. Okay, so that's the idea. You'll have the schematic at the end of the video and uh, uh, this, uh, this schematic it's very easy to be done. Uh, it needs to be connected to a 12 volts power supply. This power supply has got nothing to do with the test sector, I may say. It's only for the oscillating and the timer here and uh, you don't need uh, any kind of heat sink to the MOSFET because the time for, for measuring is very short, 10 seconds but if you use it for, uh, let's say, for testing uh, car batteries this load, this resistance here uh, should, be, should be on an uh, aluminum sink or something because uh, if you if you charge if you're trying to test like 20 amps uh, that gives a lot of heat and it's pretty dangerous but for small stuff like this you, you can use it this way you know and uh, you know I just put these things together very easy and uh, I don't need a special board you don't need a special board for this you can use this kind of uh, birds and uh, that's it folks i really hope it helps thank you for now okay let's talk a little bit about the schematic it was originally designed by victor uh, arstein or the credits to you victor thank you very much designed for check the lead acetylene gel battery is higher than uh, 20 amps I did some tweakings to enable this uh, to check the lithium cells or uh, nickel metal hybrid cells uh, like uh, hybrid uh, batteries and so on. Uh, I intend to use this for reconditioning my uh, Toyota Prius battery, high voltage battery. And uh, what I have done, uh, I put a higher resistance instead of uh, 0.6 for car batteries i put a one ohm resistance that gives me around uh, two amps for lithium cells and around four amps for uh, nickel mh uh, batteries and uh, it works very simple as you may see there are two timers the first one on the left uh, operates like a mono stable with a period of 11 seconds and uh, when the test is pressed the uh, uh, pin 3 goes to uh, IC2, which operates like an stable oscillator, 67 hertz, and that one turns the MOSFET on and connect the load to the battery. The multimeter will be 
on volts on alternating current volts on AC volts and it measure in parallel with the battery or with the tested cell uh, the droppings uh, as long the the oscillator is running so those millivolts will be divided by 10 and gives an idea about the internal resistance the number of the multimeters divided by 10 it's the internal resistance somehow that's it folks i really hope it helps thank you for now okay